So, um, to start the discussion, um, I would like to ask um, you, Irit. Um, we heard uh, different positions from Shabbat uh, Shodi and Iris Dressler on a specific context, working in a museum and working. Uh, as an artist uh, residency, um, I mean, what do these uh, acts of civil disobedience mean for you and your working environment? <laughs> <laughs> Again, the pause. <laughs> researching some urban gentrification process in London and where we were working around King's Cross and the new St. Pancras station and so on. In the end, we managed, the longest we ever managed to spend in the station with our books and cameras and papers and conversation was 80 seconds <laughs> before four different police forces descended on us to basically or to put away our books and papers or something. And every time they asked, what are we doing? We said, we're doing research. And, um, and, and, and apparently in the lexicon of antisocial behavior, which is a big thing in London, antisocial behavior, um, and which does not seem to extend to drunken bankers, who you know, are the biggest antisocial <laughs> sort of force around us. And doing research in public is akin to being, you know, ill, dirty, stoned, and crazy. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's at that level of, of sort of antisocial. So I'm, I'm very interested in the in seriousness as a, both a drive and an affect, and how it what congregates around seriousness. And by seriousness, I don't mean gravitas and earnestness. I, I'm, I'm, I think about a certain kind of attentive focus to something mm -hmm. and the way in which that attentive focus then draws sort of, of information to it to support it. So and I'm not talking about scholarly seriousness, mm -hmm. like you inform yourself, you inform yourself and then you're a serious person, you know, attending seriously to something. But um, how we make gestures of focusing attentively on something, beginning to draw lots of different kinds of information to it. And then the other thing I think of is what, what it is for us to be an ensemble of presences that I think um, that I can't think any longer at all in terms of objects 
and discourses and that these are binaries and that you argue either for the discursive or the object based and that it somehow doesn't doesn't produce much for me any longer. But the the sort of the notion of operating as presences to presences and what happens again both affectively and in terms of grounding something quite solid. That, that sort of interests me. So, uh, you know, my vocabulary has changed a lot in recent years. And, um, and also, I, I think I was trying to say that yesterday, one of the impacts of neoliberalism on knowledge is that there is no outlawed knowledge, right? All knowledge is embraced. Um, the, the policing takes place at another level. You know, for me, it's at the level of methodology. But the, the sort of, so to, to sort of, of, of set oneself up, you know, as, as subversive within this realm in which one's subversion becomes an exhibition at the Tate within 18 months, yeah. um, uh, you know, this, this no longer seems to me to be an adequate set of, of sort of responses. So, in truth, I don't know how to answer your question. Because I have this sort of nebulous terminology that um, you cannot produce a revolutionary movement around presence and seriousness, much as I would like to. I cannot. Yeah, Tommy, maybe you want to comment on that? Thinking back um, to what was said in previous talks, I would raise two points. First is about copyright uh, and I would say shifting terrain. Uh, the word ambiguity and uh, gray zone was uh, mentioned a lot. And uh, I think when we are working uh, with the contradictions of uh, copyright, we operate within uh, the zone of, of the gray zone, the, the zone of uh, ambiguity. But I would say that. Uh, what's at stake in the works exhibited in public library, but more significantly, for instance, in the example of uh, the Pirate Bay or uh, Aaron, Sw Aaron Swartz's case, is not so much uh, gray zone. Oh, there is no ambiguity there. I think that it's um, an in a process of uh, innovation, creation of new field of communication distribution uh, and media production is happening in the world. And the question is, uh, what are the institutional forms we create to capture them? So do we uh, leave them uh, to Googles of this world uh, to create new, new fields of distribution and then commodify them? There are typical stances, you know, we first do it, and then we deal with the consequences. Like we scan all of the books, and then we'll deal with uh, the publishers. And um, in that sense, um, they don't care about the law. Uh, and I don't think we should s stay within the, s the territory of uh, the law and try to address uh, its contradictions. I think that its contradictions simply reflect the fact that um, it places cultural and artistic works uh, in a context of economic relations where they necessarily have to operate. And then uh, artworks always have a contradictory relation to being uh, placed in the process of commodification. So they, they, they have this ambiguity most of the time uh, already entailed and then the gray zone is reiteration of that. And then uh, also law is there not only to set the rules, but to set the rules of negotiation where there is no clarity. So it, in a way, defines the territory of the gray zone already. Um, therefore, I think uh, the, the fundamental question um, here is not um, how do we deal with um, issues where we might be infringing co uh, copyright, where we are using the works and there are complications of, uh, of uh, permission, procedure, all of that. Uh, what is the state at stake is uh, how do uh, institutions relate 
to the processes that already uh, create forms, institutional forms of uh, distribution that address certain condition of futurity, of opening to, towards something different. No? And obviously, um, uh, digital communications have technologically introduced a different set of conditions that uh, various actors and various fields have to respond to. Um, so it is in this uh, terrain that um, institutions need to take a certain position and that is not operating in the field of ambivalence. Hence I would say that uh, civil disobedience or directly conflictual and directly affirmative um, approach might be uh, strategically much more uh, convenient to that situation rather than operating within uh, the space of, of, uh, of, of uh, ambiguity, be it set by the law, be it set by uh, cultural codes, uh, or any other way. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to um, maybe foreground is I find it interesting um, when there are political processes happening, such as Shudgat and Sanzish, um, you have uh, an intense period of contesta contestation uh, that builds uh, social, social relations and collective capacity to, to act. And once that situation passes, and it usually passes in, in defeat, and I'm talking here more from my experience with the right to the city in Zagreb, the question is, uh, what, what comes after that? Now, how do you uh, continue uh, with what was created in that moment? How do you uh, build on trust, relations of trust that were created, and explore the political field or field of politicization that has happened uh, through uh, such processes, especially when they happen and again, this is the same case in Zagreb as it is in Stuttgart, um, that they happen in relatively stabilized political uh, contexts where people not necessarily participate and their motives for participation can be something that uh, a radical politics cannot immediately relate to. So I think that that's another uh, question for institutions. How do they uh, continue keeping this opening uh, alive and how do they pre pay attention to the situations where, when, where this trust and the resources that you have can be uh, again put in place to uh, cause a stir, to cause uh, uh, a conflict uh, and to push situation uh, further um, so I'd say that those are those are uh, two situations from uh, uh, from this conference and from the exhibition and from uh, the presentations that we have that I that I think are important when we discuss uh, civil disobedience and capacity of institutions to intervene politically uh, within the existing already charted territory. No, I think it's very much about innovation, it's about uh, determinate negation and affirmation, not ambiguity. Um, yeah, I would actually react to the first word you said because, um, yeah, there is always this new liberal trap in anything. I mean, in critique, in subversion, in disobedience, in conflict. So, when you think about all these things, they are always serve new liberalism, and and I, I take that very serious. But but sometimes I still don't know. Does this mean that we can can touch these these no, surroundings anymore? It's not, no, it's not no, no I, I think there are there are moments in which it is crucial to militate mm. as visibly and noisily as mm. possible. But the the sort of you know, for my for my mapping of the terrain, it's not made up of moments of militating. Those emerge and have to be sort of responded to, but in, in the sort of textures that it might be possible to build up um, beyond those moments. And the, the sort of, and I, 
I, I, I think, you know, we, sorry, I, I shouldn't be really speaking, but we have, we have a, a inherited vocabulary, um, you know, protest and demonstration and, and how, how to make something manifest. Mm. And I think we need a much broader vocabulary, mm. a much more imaginative one. Those things are crucially important. I think what you said, Hans, about the fact that at a certain moment for politicians to see tens of thousands of subjects on the street, it, the penny drops, you know, suddenly they get it. But um, the, there, there has to be a, a, a far more sort of a rich set of, of ways to live this out. So that's, that's what I was trying to say. Um, yeah, and I would direct to respond to this also because um, whatever we, we, we call it, but you, you are also in a landscape of, of politics, of institution, where you are in a neoliberal trap, or things um, are, have no other choice. They are germinated from the alternative flows. So it's, it's all, I mean, whatever you want to do, finally, there is no money. Or um, institutions are, are many, in many cases, um, I mean, it's not for, for example, I think we were the first Verein who paid artist fees, uh, even they were very small, because actually it was said there is no money for, and even the people who would give money would say, this is impossible, you cannot pay an artist. Um, so what we did at the beginning of hardware is give it to the artist and make no books, which was probably <laughs> also not that. But I mean, this, of course, and, and Julie, Jean Baptiste Julie said it, it's on a daily level that you. Um, broaden this, these grey zones, but at a certain point they, they need to be politicized. It's not only to say, okay, we, this time we need to find this solution, because at a certain moment you, you must need to say that, that you get public money and that you can use it to, to pay artist fees. Mm -hmm. if, if I think about this notion of uh, constraint and law, I must say something totally different of all what we are discussing about is coming into my mind. Uh, it's becoming more and more difficult to invite artists from outside of Europe to join our program. Mm -hmm. So the, the obstacle between daily life in another part of the world and Europe is becoming higher and higher. So we, we feel this restrictive policy in our daily life. On the other side, it's more and more difficult for artists to have been invited to solitude to stay in Germany after the fellowship. And at the same time, inside of the house, the restrictions regarding security rules are bigger and bigger and more and more physically present. Mm -hmm. uh, and this restriction is making one person even more responsible more and more if you don't follow and these are moments where it's no more about civil disobedience it's about being obliged mm. to do things exactly like we used to have a kitchen that was open to the fellows and there is a new restriction about this that only people who are accredited are allowed to enter the kitchen because it's a collective kitchen. So these are the constraints that compared to 20 years ago are totally changing. I would say a Russian artist coming to Solitude in 1993, deciding to stay in Germany, didn't need to prove any income, didn't need to prove any uh, social insurance. We just confirmed that he was a fellow in Solitude, that he behaved well, and that uh, he's a great artist, and it was enough. We, we have been treating in the last months several times with the Ministry of Inner Affairs, especially with the Minister himself, about but do you promote artists here and you give fellowships through solitude or through the state gifts or through the Academy of Fine Arts? Couldn't you imagine that for the people who have been somehow awarded by the state, this was just about the rest of what we. No way. You know the rules, this is how it works. And for, for me, uh, I don't say that it's not important to discuss about what we discuss, but what I feel 
in the daily life of running the institution is regarding those questions. And at the moment, uh, the, the, the questions we have with, with copyright will be probably someday as well. It's yes or it's no, and the border is clear. At the moment, we still have a great zone. Yeah, well, this, this means that the gray zone extends. It doesn't become smaller. If, if these regulations becoming bigger, the gray zone also becoming... And then I would say, sometimes it's also, I can ground it uh, in, in the structure of, of how I communicate and how I move inside of the institution, uh, how I uh, meet, at one example, a public sphere of teaching when I'm going in a gentrification area and, and gathering more than, and I think in Korea it's more than seven people, it's already a demonstration, when you are closer than uh, two meters to each other or something like that. So there are all these rules on, on the public sphere, they are incredibly complex. Um, the, I even wouldn't say, maybe in London we could speak about gentrification, I would say in Seoul, this term doesn't help, it's, it's, it's something different. Uh, it's something what we call uh, the, uh, the planning of the city on the tabula rasa, of erasing space immediately, not, not a second thinking about that the cultural scene is coming in and then this and that and that, it's killed. So the, the field, the, the field is, 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 is incredibly complex, but we described now in this lecture was a literal moment. It was a moment of a maximum visibility and a moment of a request from outside into the institution. And then the question is how to, for when you're speaking about this long-term development in this, how to reconnect that again out of this community uh, in all the structures where, where it's not longer literal, where it's not longer immediately, where it's not longer uh, recognized by structure of activism and directly <coughs> political action. Uh, this is this is a process I, I, I was a little bit maybe by this highlighting. Uh, this is one of the questions where you heavily have to go on this. And this is uh, when when I'm now referring to what you are saying. Of course, we nearly have no partners anymore on an institutional level in Hungary. Mm -hmm. The state is fucked up. This is it's a totally disaster what happens there. Yeah. It's controlled by nationalistic right-wing movement. Agnes Heller is calling Bonapartism. Was worse. Yeah, well, she said Bonapartism, and maybe I, I trust her more in the interpretation uh, how she uh, uh, describes the constitutional shift in this, in this context. This means, of course, then you have to uh, move from this situation we have now in, in, in Stuttgart, so of course, then you, then you have to move your attention as an institution. And I don't think this is patronizing. Uh, and it's also the, one of the inner conflicts is there every time that in the moment when you recognize an exclusion and you deal in structures of an inclusion, you immediately uh, include uh, the potential uh, or give inclusion to the potential of the uh, resistance which could extend on the spot where uh, in the moment the conflict is, is placed. This is, a, is a, it's an incredible, complicated, unsolvable moment and I wouldn't uh, speak about this trap of neoliberalism. I think this is more described in, uh, in, in, in this structure. Um, and <coughs> as what is in the moment, I think, um, the importance is uh, to recognize an institutional landscape in function under the structure of, of a possible partner. Uh, and it's absurd, or for us here in Central Europe, uh, we have also have very simple things. Uh, one example is this is a very old fashionable term, and maybe it doesn't fit it anymore in the, or fit anymore in this contemporary discussion. But the, the, the space of freedom, uh, um, uh, structures of protection, uh, places of free speech, um, all this kind of, of uh, let's call them, this the infrastructures, uh, 
uh, where to go and to speak about the, the gentrification, sitting in London and going by yourself, making street signs uh, like this. So um, I think this is the the um, um, how what is was it called? The melange, said the one translator. Gemengelager, I don't know how to translate that. I think this 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 site of convergence and Yeah. Uh, in, 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 in which I see this 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 uh, requesting on the institution. And I think you know I was I was think, listening to Jean Pierre and I thought Absolutely. I mean, the, the sort of the day is taken up almost every day by being between, I'd say, the British University, being between two imperatives. One is because in the arts and humanities we have lost all government subsidy. We're basically completely self-funded on the basis of tuition. So because overseas, which is non-EU students, have to pay double the tuition that EU students do, then there is an imperative to go and recruit as many overseas students. The attraction is the old geography of empire, where a, a degree from a British university is still a covetable commodity within the local bureaucracy and, and, and sort of structure. So that's one set of imperatives. And the other set of imperatives is the, the sort of draconian migration laws, the, the sort of, of more and more and more restrictions on bringing not just artists, which has become a nightmare, but students coming in paying these inflated sort of tuition fees. And um, the fact that we have now been asked by the UK Border Agency to police our own students. So we are in charge of making sure that they are there really as students. <coughs> that they're not potential migrants and they're not trying to make money. And, you know. Same thing, I think. What's this? to say Hang on a second. <laughs> it, it, it's sort of, of last year. A university in London that did not comply with all of this lost its right to have overseas students. And overnight, over a thousand students were basically in the street. Their visas cut short. We were getting phone calls from all these people. Can I come and do a PhD with you? I'm losing my grant, my visa, my right to stay, etc. So the, the sort of, of Half the day is spent negotiating these two sort of, of, of edicts. But the, the sort of, of the, the question is, you know, what kind of responses you can make? And the, the sort of, of, so there's the whole path of making it visible, making it transparent, showing the idiocy of it, showing, you know, all the terrible things that this is leading to, you know, from the destruction of people's lives to the unbelievable provincialization of the system of knowledge, etc. So that's that's sort of one path. But I think institutionally, and you know, you are to some extent complicit with all of this because you know there's there's it's it's not as if there's you know one simple way out of this situation. But I think institutionally, the, the sort of the alliances you begin to form, um, the, the, the way in which you might, let's say, expand the notion of what is legitimate site of knowledge production by saying university has to be aligned with an NGO and a refugee camp and a, a um, you know, a, a food bank somewhere and, 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 and so on. Because because refuge is the site of knowledge production and famine is the site of knowledge production and violence is the site of knowledge production. And when, when we are able to produce really active, not in name, not decoration, but really active alliances with other spaces and designate them as, knowledge, as sites of knowledge production, 
then one of the, for me, it's one of the ways in which the, the sort of, of, of the boundary line of the university can open up. And the, the, I have more of a vocabulary to argue with border control and migration policies and visa laws, etc., because it's not an inside and an outside to such an extent. Because what this feeds on is stable border lines, right? And, and the sort of, of the lure of being able to come in and gain something valuable and so on. And when, when you did designate the sort of, of spaces which are considered abject, when you designate them signs of knowledge production, when you actively produce protocols of cooperation, um, when, when, when you fragment the degrees. I mean, one of the biggest battles I'm having right now is to take away the degree giving power from the university. To say the degree has to be given by more than you. Because you, you don't have all the knowledge. You can't adjudicate it and so on. So how, how do you sort of allow more, more entities to come into the degree giving power? So it's shared. So the knowledge is authorized by more than just a university. These, to me, are really, really significant institutional battles. Or, uh, you know, you, you cannot imagine the battles that we're having around getting sanctioned uh, collaborative collective PhD. Mm -hmm. PhD is an individual degree given to an individual person. Knowledge has not been individual for at least a hundred years. You know, so how did you produce the, the sort of, or there was an illusion? You know, so there, there are endless institutions. The for the hierarchy, for the social hierarchy of the university. It was a necessity for maintaining the social hierarchy of the university. Yeah, and, and I mean, there are a lot of enlightenment values that are embedded in the individualization of knowledge. Um, but the, the sort of, of, but I'm not thinking about the social in, in, in the sense of, of cultural capital and, and so on. I'm thinking about those moments within, let's say, the life of the university where you are in a head-on collision with the border agency, with the home office, with um, the Federation of, of London University. You know, it's a, it's a daily head on collision. And, the, the sort of, and you're operating constantly in the service of completely contradictory imperatives, none of which you agree with. And then the question is, what, what to do with that to turn it into something that actually has some value so you're not wasting your life? <laughs> Um, yeah, and, uh, I, I mean, I was just thinking uh, in terms of also you, Tommy, I, you said that the, uh, I, I liked very much when you had the um, banner um, with the demonstrators and you said they can you know, say they're members of the uh, Lekafa and then uh, you kind of have this protection. So, I mean, you can also use these boundaries, uh, as you said, to kind of uh, for your projects, Tommy, as well, to have a, to have this uh, kind of um, protection in a way. No? Um. Yeah, obviously there is uh, a difference uh, from what's allowed within um, the playground of the institution. Um, you have much more freedom to operate that, and you can uh, create situations that are hypotheticals. Like, what if we can think away? These the existing set of conditions and create create something uh, new. But the question is, how do you uh, institute that beyond the, the uh, limits of the institution? And that's much more difficult because obviously institutions are facing liability, and then uh, people operating within the institutions. For instance, Goldsmith is, is, I guess, much much larger in that sense much less um, uh, something that you can influence uh, at an individual level, unlike Kunstverein, where you can really define what the political position is going to be and how you are going to be. You know, in Goldsmiths, 
you, you already have the administration and you have probably uh, a whole range of opinions that might on many things dissent uh, with you. So how do you operate uh, with the understanding that things need to be different and that you know how to make them different uh, in a world that does not allow you this from an institutional uh, point of view because you're liable, you, you, you are facing uh, repression uh, in terms of you know, uh, cuts or uh, Revocation of, of uh, your uh, rights or whatever. No, so I think um, that's a difficult thing to answer. But I think um, that different institutions allow for different uh, capacity of uh, intervention. So I don't know. Maybe creating those, innovating those where where uh, you are allowed to intervene or you can intervene, uh, and where you can transgress. I think transgression is very important in uh, political uh, action. That's what uh, moves the debate, that's what moves the position, that, that's what allows you to uh, go through a process of subjectivation and to become uh, an adversary for, for powers that be. And um, I think that that's worth exploring. You know, I can't really say to people who are already in the institution, how your institution should uh, do something that a small institution can maybe uh, uh, create. Uh, you know, just I think, you know, places like Goldsmith, it's too large of a beast to be able to uh, intervene, intervene politically, though people working there might have really uh, strong desire and then seek for other ways, other forms uh, of operating in the world that are transformative, <coughs> unlike the institutions. Uh, and then they can bring in also the... the, the you know, the contradictions... Um, I mean, I, you know, all I can talk about is struggle. I mean, I have no answers and no, no sort of, of, of right positions to espouse. But it, it's the living out of the contradiction. If I think about Goldsmiths, which, you know, is Goldsmiths, but it's also London University, so it's part of the Federation of 22 Universities. It has a Senate that, you know, sort of, it's, it's, it's scaled up and implicated in so many bureaucracies and so on, you know, that it, it's never autonomous, really. Um, but the, um, the contradiction of, on the one hand, Working, which is probably you know the, the one good thing about us, working really hard to have a space of refuge for thinking against the grain, and on the other hand, the sort of, of working under all of these imperatives, which are basically ones for outlawing, and doing the same simultaneously. And how do you, you know, how how do you sort of, of, of reconcile those? And then have moments outside of the institution that are moments of sort of, of, of quite extreme resistance that are not sort of, of, of um, attenuated by all of these things that you're conscious of, you know, in your daily work. So, you know, if I go out in the street, I suddenly forget all the sort of complexity that I am living out on a daily basis. I, I find these things quite difficult to negotiate simultaneously and to have some kind of, of um, Marcel is dying to say something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, but, but this procedure of uh, hand is like a very... You've had your say. Offensive. Yeah, I'm really sorry. For, I, I was not dying, but now I'm dying. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so what I like, and I think that it was not mentioned, maybe it's a, it's a kind of a good entry point. Uh, what I like from Sean's uh, presentation was that, uh, that he was uh, super happy when he realized that uh, the institution he established was actually um, constituted through certain values and aims so that it will die if it doesn't do that. And uh, that was kind of a simple case uh, and um, 
and I, I think that we can use it as an example. So my question would be, uh, is, 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 is it possible for, especially for smaller institutions, uh, so now I will use that uh, the expression, to die for? Because um, I think that there are things in a, you know, like, so sometimes some values, maybe, and sometimes some historical kind of sequence is just like a, a, a kind of a, a making that challenge that you sacrifice the institution, you sacrifice the organization for the chaos because uh, the organization which we got is just like stuck. And then another one is on the uh, like a smaller layer in that tree of the organization, and that's the career, uh, because I think that there are always like a career inside of the institution. So sometimes the, that is it really that we can sacrifice a career for certain values? Because that's basically what we sacrifice when we really go for the for the furthest uh, uh, the consequences. And I would say, at least from my position, that that's kind of an easy, uh, easy answer. And I can just uh, bring like few very concrete examples: what can be done and what was what, what, what was uh, what was done. For example, Aaron Schwartz was uh, taking his role of a member of MIT, uh, just being in that space because it had the free access to JSTOR, which is. Uh, uh, other ways not accessible, but MIT made it free. So he didn't break any rules, but he knew about the consequences which could go after what he was doing. He was downloading the JSTOR articles uh, because he believed that uh, that's the thing which should be done. And I'm just wondering how many careers, how many leftist careers, how many careers which are based on the promises of changing the world, because some of the careers are really based on these promises, not just on a existence, and then there are like almost no case of downloading the knowledge which is accessible through, through the career inside of the institution, and then no one is doing that. And that proved that that, that, that was the rupture which is like huge, which uh, directly challenged the private property in a, such a clear case. So I, I, I understand that uh, making that case in the in the in the realm and uh, in the in the kind of uh, domain of housing is maybe not that clear, but still like clear enough. And I think that some of the things which happens in Spain now are great because again it challenges the very foundation of 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 today's uh, stuff of today's like. Uh, what kind of things? Sorry. What are you referring to? In Spain. Yeah, like the collectives, like co-housing, like a, a associations, for example, in Barcelona, where they make like a, a kind of, um, uh, was the Catalan, you know, the the colorful is part of that, uh, I don't know in, in Catalan. Salsa, the, the, uh, yeah, the... The association which the actually association. deals with, so it's not even the, the one project, but the uh, it's board collective, board. it's collective property, which is in that sense distributed also through through many layers of the of the governance. Yeah, now the, 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 the many, I mean, in housing, in that sense, I think that that's a great, but I, I, I still think that it's less clear, but it's more important in many ways, because we can easily uh, get to the knowledge with a little bit of help from hackers, at least. But still, I think that that clear case, for me, it's just like, this is the opportunity more than, 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 than the surprise just to remind that that's possible. And I think that the academy, especially these kind of branches of academy, which are the, where the careers are, 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 are kind of based on these promises, is the easy thing, you know, like uh, I can provide anyone a script which will do the clicking, but it could be also done through clicking because it's a principle. So even if you do 10 articles, it's already enough of a, of a signifier. But if you do like uh, 4 millions, then the consequence could be different, for example, like uh, for Aaron Schwartz. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> um. Maybe just very briefly, the, the, the work, um, I mean, with the career or something like this, I, I think this, uh, this leads to, to no end, because I mean, I take a decision to, to behave in a certain way, and uh, if I always say, yeah, but I can't do because then I, I I have a problem with my career, then, then I can make this decision, it's fine. I, but then I cannot complain and I cannot be radical or something. I mean, 
so so there there are decisions that you take, and these decisions lead to some consequences. Some you can oversee and overlook, and you decide I take this risk, and some maybe not. And I'm in a completely other position than, of course, somebody who is uh, living here um, with, with not with, with not a clear um, political situation, like having no no no, like, no right to stay, etc. So I'm, I'm in a very privileged situation. But the other thing is, I, I also I never would go for formalizing because you asked how 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 to I, I thought this like a question how to formalize um, this <coughs> um, this critical position. But but uh, for example now still people are using the space, but we try not to formalize it. I mean, protest is not something I can teach to the people or I can can make. Pave ways for. I mean, this is this is conflict. This is, this is total. I mean, this is struggle also in a positive sense, or conflict also in a positive sense. Yeah. I wouldn't say that uh, these things need formalizing. I think that it's much more looking for the next opening, and then also uh, building, uh, organizing, doing the work of organizing, which I guess is the hardest work to do, um, and. Okay, uh, that's also the question, I think that's the fundamental question of agency. Like, who does the work of uh, organizing? Uh, resources are important, opportunities to act are important, but then... Um, yeah, but we, we keeping... didn't organize this, this protest, no? I mean, we, we are having our own organization and then it's... Because in the beginning I said that there is this unexpected guest, right? We are also an institution to be criticized, it's not only that, that we are this... Institution which um, um, tries to be disobedient or something like that, but, but uh, so this is this this moment of conflict of, of learning by, by I mean, because when I said in the very beginning you were always standing with one leg on the wrong side. Mm. I mean, if you think about this black and white, uh, what do you mean? Can you... Yeah, because you always are excluding somebody. You 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 can't think when you can't create an ideal place which is to, does right to everybody. I mean, you're, you're, you're doing a program, you're thinking about exhibitions, and there's always something which, which you are not thinking about, which you are excluding, mm -hmm. which you... And yeah, but that's, I think, the, where you bring, where you make decisions. No, you do this and not that. And I think uh, that's what, where you uh, no, these are, these are actually uh, artists uh, who are saying you are you are doing something wrong. This is the, I mean, this is like book content coming to fucking institute. I don't know. Um, but, no. <laughs> <laughs> so so this is uh, and then the, the, the way is how do I react to it? Do I do I say but I'm the institution and I and still this you decide in any moment. But but there is this I mean this, this criticism comes uh, that this uh, then from the other people. I mean, from the outside to the institution. Yeah, but I, 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 think, I, think, I, I think there's a real danger in, in sort of starting a discussion which says, you know, this is a better position, this is a slightly less good position, this is really great work that really changes everything, and this is, you know, halfway compromised and so on and so on. Because I think if, if, you, if you think about disobedience, I think it's a coalition into which many factors contribute. And some are able to organize in a more visible and some are less, less visible. Some can, can help contribute certain kinds of contents. Some can um, ensure the longevity of the disobedience as it kind of works its way into structures. And I really think that, that the, the, um, the kind of division into who's more right, you know, and who's who's more effective in the moment, is not helping us in any way. I think I think we need very very broad coalitions in which we recognize all of our contributions as a kind of simultaneity of what might con what might constitute a disobedience that has real staying power. I'm interested in staying power. Yes. Um, yes. Because I'm, I'm the only one having this position, and uh, you will blame me for this, but I have to say it. Uh, I, I'm glad that I was not the first one to speak about the complicity of institutions towards 
the power uh, that is in charge. Uh, and this is the, the moment where you will disagree, but I don't give up the obligation of maintaining the contact and the dialogue with the power, of uh, explaining them what is wrong, and continuing speaking with the head of uh, the new abteilung in the foreign, German Foreign Office, not giving up speaking with the French and German authorities about the necessity of rethinking the policy of uh, copyright, not giving up speaking with the Ministry for Foreign Affairs here in order to speak uh, about better positions. They have to be reminded that this position exists and I think that we, some of us, have to maintain this dialogue. I'm doing it, it's the contrary of disobedience, but I think that it's also an important task and people have to be, to take this also into consideration. Now you will blame me, you have... Uh, <laughs> because also, uh, maybe I didn't say the word disobedience because now in the beginning I was not sure if I can pronounce it correctly. So disobedience, now I heard it so often that I simply have to say disobedience is something which is in the constitutional law of democratic states. This is identified disobedience. This is, has rules. This is uh, clearly uh, coming out of a certain kind of a program. And maybe this is even not what we're speaking about. We're speaking about, uh, I, I take the term again, up struggle or conflict. Disobedience is already an agreement where we are much closer to the system than we believe. Disobedience is what uh, uh, the rules of the public sphere uh, gave us to move into this public sphere. This means also that in the moment when I'm speaking about disobedience, we are in a battle with every private company who also has the same right to identify as one example what is public sphere and what not. So maybe when we're speaking about the street and uh, proclaiming the street, maybe we're not speaking about disobedience. Uh, this is one of the uh, remarks I would, uh, I would like to do when we when we looking a little bit also. We are very unsharp now in, in the moment where is the state, where is the private, where is the public. Um, but but uh, why, why I was so impatient also the whole time was when, when you describe the situation with the refugees, uh, or the situation uh, that you have to hire all these super rich kids from abroad the world to, to study in Goldsmiths. Uh, what is missing in this image is also that now, I, normally we would identify... I say they are higher than uh, but, um, but what we are missing, missing in the moment totally in this image, and a little bit you were, were uh, pointing that also, that in the meantime, we would identify certain kind of areas which are good to save this, uh, uh, that uh, goldsmiths can survive. But in these areas, the middle class, high educated level, like one example, I'm regular in South Korea, in South Korea, 25% of the young people are unemployed. It's nearly the same situation like in Spain. In, in 50%. 50%. <laughs> that, yeah, it's nearly but from, from till the age of 25. You lose your clients in the moment. So uh, the situation is this: this, this, this is what, what, what happened in this when we're looking on this global landscape. And then I would answer a little bit this, this, this idea of the institutions who are dying. Uh, maybe it's good that they're dying because then you can create new ones which have a, a different perspective. I would partly subscribe that, and on the other part, there is something which makes me, then in this moment, incredibly nervous. Uh, because uh, I, I go now since 2004 regular to South Korea. I came there, a lot of alternative uh, art spaces popped up in Seoul. It was a super atmosphere, very productive, no market. Uh, public uh, substitutions uh, appear in this, in this situation. Now, ten years later, the ones who, who, which survived went into the market. Uh, the critical biennials are commercialized, um, and the other alternative art spaces disappear under this harsh condition of gentrification uh, in, in, in the city itself. So, 
um, old institutions, like in this old Europe, uh, out of this perspective, get an incredible interesting value because they still sitting on these capacities. Huh? They still, and maybe the, uh, they should get their ass off from these capacities and bring them in a structure of partnership and sharing and, and collations. Uh, the Kunstverein, uh, and they, they, very often they are not transparent. At one example, financial wise, uh, the most of these traditional institutions don't speak about the budgets. They don't speak about how they spread the budgets, how they decide that, and how this again is ruled and controlled by ministers. I wouldn't call that politics, this is the administrative, technocratic part who uh, gives us the, as the rules. So I would describe this area in the. I don't, I stop here. Because I would say the Kunstverein is a very, very big institution. The house is owned by the Inner Ministry. Uh, we get the money from the Ministry of Culture, we get money from the administration of the city, uh, and we get uh, money from, from, from our uh, uh, members, and we apply for money from Europe and, and uh, Kulturstiftung des Bundes. We are in the middle of all these power structures, and they are big. They are the same. I wouldn't make between a small cell of operating, uh, I wouldn't make such a big difference to an aperture like the closeness. The question? Well, that's not it. Yeah, um, yeah, I think um, we are now at the time when you, you wanted to say the show was Yeah, so we, um, um, we should open up the, the discussion now. <laughs> so, the microphone. There are three questions. Uh, first here, then there. Um, <clears throat> maybe my thought is a little bit on a too abstract level now hearing all this concrete knowledge which I think is so valuable to, to be presented with but um, before that I, I shortly thought that maybe one aspect that is at stake here is a, a notion of politics uh, without the uh, concept of future um, in, in some way um, like Tom's question was how to, how to keep up uh, with the activist um, moments uh, that have been achieved, how to how to find maybe also structural um, translations uh, of those activist moments. I heard that, and then I thought of this concept of the educator uh, that you presented yesterday, who cannot control where uh, the knowledge uh, or the intense uh, events of knowledge productions that have been produced, where the knowledge can go. Um, so I thought maybe this is. Um, this is um, in, in, at stake, um, like when we have a political moment, how do we judge what is going on and, and where is, is it going? But, and then the question, do we need to, uh, to, to know before what the consequences are uh, when we are acting? Um, yeah, I thought, I just thought to contribute this, this uh, scenery. Uh, yeah, and then I want to say, but maybe problematic in this concept of politics as uh, only happening in, in, not only, but also happening in this, those present moments is that it sounds a little bit like also this idea of um, being subversive all the time. So maybe there is a bridge between those two concepts that, that we don't, wouldn't like so much, but that somehow there is a familiar sound in it to, to be subversive all the time. Uh, hi, my name is Hook and this sucks. No, uh, <laughs> where did you get that impression of me? <laughs> I wonder. Uh, I wanted to just to offer a, a theoretical uh, tool or a frame or a crutch. Uh, there, is, there is a very subtle nuance, but it's very important to realize that the difference exists between being subversive and, uh, and, and, and being a ball breaker. Uh, it's, uh, it's a difference between being an active citizen and being a jerk, all right? So, for me, it is massively impressive to observe uh, the dialogue between representatives of, or, or people belonging to institutions, or identifying themselves with institutions, uh, about these institutions being subversive or, or having this, this type of a transgressive role in a, in a society. But 
you see, not at all cost. This is not uh, a beauty contest of who is more subversive. Uh, uh, this is a question of understanding the theater of operations, a wonderful expression coming from this altruistic field of military, uh, where simply you have this onion skin of layers of context, and uh, like Monsieur Joly said, uh, there, there's this uh, situation, and it's not about complicity, it's about uh, acknowledging the fact that we are all belonging to this one holistic concept, uh, context of society, and you cannot uh, take for yourself the exclusive right to be subversive just because you said that first. Uh, that's not how I would define your role as an institution in society. Fuck off. In this way, in this sense, sure, fuck off is the right way to put it. Ah, right there, thanks to this microphone. Uh, and and uh, I know this sounds like a sedating kind of approach, like appeasing, you know, like uh, let's all cool down a little bit, but really, you know, to observe, you know, to, to reflect your own uh, you know, transgressivity through the lens of a contribution to a society is different than the um, defensive activism. Like, somebody cut your funding, you tell them to fuck off. Okay, I understand, this is all defensive. But when we are discussing this other, hopefully a half of your activism, not 2% eh? uh, where you choose to propose stuff to society, no. Now, that's where things become interesting to me. I appreciate your fight to get your money back. Yeah. But, I mean, and I appreciate your innovative approaches to do that, and the networks of solidarity you develop and hopefully build to last long. Great shit. But much more important and much more uh, serious in the long way. Uh, oh, I almost used the French expression again. Uh, this was Rodel, that uh, historian. Great guy. Um, when, you, when you introduce uh, the time dimension, and that's where your contributions become fucking sexy. Yeah? So this is what I want to hear. How are you going to help me innovate? Huh? Mm -hmm. how, how, what? how are you going to help me innovate in the social space? Like, what is the new thing that you are bringing? Not the defense of your inherited uh, autonomy. Respect for that fight, totally, of course. But it's less interesting. It's more like a unionist uh, debate. Like. That's very sexy. <laughs> Thank you, Marcel. I said I'm sexy. I, I no, the unions are struggling. Thank you for that <laughs> very productive contribution. Um, I absolutely agree, and I think that one of the things that one needs to really sort of work against is um, to be a sort of salvage worker. You know, where you're 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 sort of of, of, of saving the inheritance of you know seeming autonomy, seeming individual independence, all all of, all of those things. And um, the, the, to, the, the tension between working under a whole set of growing restrictions that are financial, that are, are, are uh, legislative, that, that are, are, are around um, um, permits and, and, and so on and so on, is how much attention it saps. And, and where is really the work that needs to be done? is the work, I think, of precisely what you're saying, to, to renew the project. And, and oddly enough, I think that that's the moment when you look to, when you look to, to certain kinds of highly visible transgressive practices. I and mean, sort of, of thinking about the first weeks of trying to understand the questions of people in the Indignados movement were articulating and thinking, this is much more than protest. You know, there's, there's a kind of, of a new articulation here that now one has to kind of do the work of making it grounded, operational, transmittable, you know, kind of, 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 of circulating in a different way, beyond the immediate sort of, of dramaturgy of protest. And, and, I think, and I think you're absolutely right, and I think it's something one should say to oneself every day. You know, I am not in the business of salvage. You cannot waste your energies on, on preserving you know, the inheritance. Because in, in many ways it's probably not worth preserving.
Um, I, know I normally don't like to ask questions in these things because I feel like when I formulate the question, it's uh, like stacking a big plate or a big pile of delicate porcelain, and then <laughs> by the time I wait, and then it's like carrying it somewhere else, and now I'm trying to uh, put it back again, and uh, <laughs> I just uh, I know it will be a disaster. <laughs> so uh, I, I wanted to. Um, Think about, or I wanted to bring up uh, this uh, experience we had recently in Australia, where I recently moved, and it was about, uh, around the Sydney Biennale, and um, you know it came to light that uh, the, not just the sponsor but a founding sponsor had um, you know gotten a contract for managing um, the, the offshore detention facilities uh, where the refugees that are trying to arrive uh, by boat are, yeah, they're. Uh, uh, basically imprisoned, um, you know, and it's uh, like a policy, a government policy that's um, popular but deeply like wrong. Um, and so, uh, artists threatened to boycott. Uh, you probably already know the story, so I shouldn't summarize it too much. But one thing that that stood out to me was uh, in the process, you know, they were saying. Uh, you, you guys should just put this in the work, you know, like you're free to make a work about it. Um, but this, uh, this threat to boycott is, uh, yeah, we can't really stand for this. And this went all the way up to the, the, one of the biggest people in government, one of the senior ministers, uh, saying uh, in the end that, um, you know, like you can't, well, he was directly criticizing the artists and also saying uh, that you can't, um, um, uh, that one could not turn down any money based on um, uh, some ethical um, reason. And if you did, then you would no longer be eligible for state money. Right? Yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, directly connected. To it. Yeah. Say, if, you, if you don't go for the private, you don't get the public. Yeah, so, so I bring this all up uh, uh, to say that uh, eventually the, 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 the person from the family stepped off the board of it, and then the, the, the problem went away. You know? That's what they say. Uh, of course, mandatory offshore detention still goes on and all this. Um, but I was thinking uh, in the aftermath of all of this that like, um, I was really dissatisfied with the, um, what the institutions within Australia like, uh, did, which is essentially nothing. I mean, from my perspective, uh, that you have uh, artists who are really putting themselves on the line and uh, a lot of people in the community who are speaking up. And then um, when it came Certainly some like members and individuals of, from within institutions would say something, but there was no sort of consequence, like, there was no parallel to uh, that the artists would do, um, you know, this division between what's the content of the work and the how, how they do their work. Like, um, there was no sort of parallel within the, the institutions, so maybe people would say something, but there would be no change. Um, I thought it was an opportunity for a change in the way that institutions uh, operated within uh, Australia, but that never happened. And I was, I was thinking in particular of what Hans was saying uh, recently about uh, the, the sort of lack of transparency or around funding. Um, um, yeah, I see this is where my my disaster of a question uh, <laughs> where, yeah, it, like crashes into a wall. But um, um, I was watching your panel and thinking in very particular terms about uh, uh, how to analyze uh, this situation. And I was just thinking about uh, how, like, from within an institution, the world looks one way, and then, you know, I would still argue that you can be outside institutions. <laughs> you feel it a lot more when you are outside of institutions, and you don't have the same sort of access to, to, to resources and things. So I was just thinking about the, the way that the, from within and without uh, they meet, and um, that there can be that this sort of like misalignment um, uh, happens around these issues, like in, in particular um, around this, uh, these issues in Australia, and um, like how things might have gone differently. Um, so I'm trying to analyze that situation in the light of your panel. Um, maybe one uh, to add to this is case in, in, in the Sydney Biennial. One of the interesting things was. Uh, then uh, by this discussion it was figured out that this so-called main sponsor only covered 6% of the whole cost of the biennial. So it, it was a joke. 
but he gets attention because he socialized public money for his attention. And by this, what came uh, by this um, complicity between the, the uh, politics and this private money, this was at least the scandal because there was not a need which could be identified. Um, maybe by this, this question of inside and outside the institution, then um, I would also uh, going back to this question of the preservation and defend and things like that. Um, and maybe uh, questions also you, you came up again with this question, what could be a future, or whatever that uh, should Whether be. Whether it's a relevant questioning. Um, and uh, maybe also one of the points is that uh, sometimes we're thinking the institution as a site uh, and not as a relationship. Uh, or, uh, as, as something which is interconnected with elements which are far away from the question of representation, for example. Uh, things which are could be a pro productive element of the institution, uh, which are at least not reconnected with the institution itself. Uh, they uh, could uh, have this potential uh, that they have elements in itself which are requested from the outside, which never appear as something uh, which was, at one example, connected with this apparatus of the institution itself. And this is also what I experienced with this so-called in and out of the institution, that a lot of people who are operating outside of the institution are very much aware also of, uh, of the effects when they can use them. And by this usage of the institution, it could be very interesting uh, to recognize your own concept of an institution. Um, and then I would say this is something where they are still good for. This is one of the very, very uh, uh, basic or substantial uh, qualities. And this I also would say in some of, uh, in, in regard to some of this um, uh, situations in Spain and what coming out of, of this discussion around property and uh, to, to take a one example also institution as an, as an example where there is a potential to put this question of property again back in, in, in a different spot because you can recover things. So we have, this is of course not for Goldsmiths, but we have all this discussion about this uh, um, socialization of, of, of tax paid uh, money by private agency uh, and we see an incredible absorption in, in the German system in the, uh, in the moment and uh, we could maybe get rid of this process by integrating our sources into structures which again are not institutionalized in, in this sense. As I, there I would say uh, see a strong potential so, like some for, for uh, the future. So what to do with this 740,000 euro uh, the Kunstverein yearly gets uh, to survive by the city and the state, and the 80,000 you get from the 3,000 members. Uh, how uh, they could be used in a certain kind of way, and to speak about that. So this is this has the potentials uh, which are not about preservation. Um, I think we're running really, really, really late. Um, Daniel. Um, Daniel, the, the last and final and short question. <laughs> okay. No, I can talk about the, the lines also. No, it's to add a, a new layer or, or level also to talking about the, the Spanish situation now and also to make a distinction between uh, individual action and collective action for this something in the society because sometimes like an artist we, we are part of a a uh, very sophisticated cultural process. So this, uh, the institutions have a responsibility, but we have a responsibility, but the whole process is, is quite, can be collective to add 
uh, information, to put questions on the table, to, to give us where it is at some time. But the collective process, the political collective process, sometimes react, uh, and if it, uh, it depends on the consequence. So there's an action and reaction. And this is my present, uh, I don't know, appreciation that this happened in Spain. I am not agree with every collective reaction, for example, that is happening in Spain and totally uh, disagree with this uh, going about the nationally. But the, the, the Catalan, we are reacting for something that is happening with the central government or something, so the reaction, when I see a million of people in the street with a flag, I start to be nervous, but maybe because my background and my family say, you see a flag, start to run or something. Mm -hmm. But then, for example, that happened with the Indignados. It was a reaction. But Merkel say, well, Spanish people look like a, a, like a rich people. We need to cut this something. And now we have a reaction to this. 50% uh, of, the, of the young people under 30 uh, years have a lot of time. And then this is a consequence for a friend of mine said, uh, and a student say that is uh, an artist also say, before I have no time to be an activist because I was studying and I was working all the time with my uh, doctor, see, blah, blah, blah. But now, after the summer campaign, I have a lot of time, nine months. And now they, they start to organize, and it was a surprise in the, in the European election. They get the, the Podemos this weekend, these people coming from the street, from the, uh, mostly from, from uh, Plata, uh, from Madrid. They start to organize an incredible machinery. They get five parliamentarians last month, and the government, even every poll from the government said, this is even not a party, this is just a social collective. This is young people from the university trying to organize, but they have a party, they have no rule, even they connecting in internet, something that we don't know. They are, that, uh, yesterday I made the, the joke, they are talking about beauty party, who, uh, who, who, who mind about all this uh, that they are talking. So we uh, don't understand it. Today in El País, they say that now is the majority forces in Spain. It's a double to the Socialist Party and to the Popular Party, only in two months. So the, now the parties, even the government, start to really, really be very nervous. Everybody, uh, the, the, the European Parliament is asking for information, who is these people, who is... But this, it was the same reaction in Greece. You, you force in something and then you create citizen. And then you force in this and you create uh, Podemos. And this is, for me, the reaction is, 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 a, is a counter uh, action, and it's quite different too. Yeah. So now I have to be very authoritarian as director of this house. This was the local uh, con contribution, but with a universal uh, meaning that is giving hope for this notion. And we should have been at lunch now one hour ago, and I think they are totally angry in the kitchen. <laughs> it's getting cold. It's getting cold. Yes. Overcooked. So, overcooked. <laughs>